Okay, here's the gist. I'm a gay guy who's been living in New York City for the past three decades. I got shit to talk about. I also have awesome friends who also have a lot of shit to talk about. That's what this podcast is about. Way off the record. People that you never hear from, that you need to hear from. Because trust me, girl, you need this fabulous in your life. Tito? Chica? Tito. Tito, is this recording now? It is. It's okay. recording. Tito Lapag shot. He was Tito Tito La shot when we first got him. And and um and then you know, starting, you know, we got him before the the uh the podcast. And then he sort of became this um mascot, you know, and so he's the face of the podcast, basically, on Instagram or whatever. Welcome. <laughs> Welcome to Way Off the Record. Today, my guests are the creative team behind Constance Cooks, Constance Zaytoun, and Mark Stewart Whites. How are you? Thank you for having us, Scott. We're doing good. Uh, thanks. Thrilled to have you. It's been it's been too long since we've been able to hang out, but I really wanted to devote this episode to this amazing show that you guys are working on that um you've created and you write and you produce and develop and edit and it's just fabulous um let's look at a cute clip of the podcast um here we go i'm gonna have to do something like technical difficulties just to just to when i see the thing okay and we're back. Um, that was fantastic. That was fantastic, and I think it gives the audience a a really good a really good sense of the the feel of the show. And what I also love about it is that it explains in a really fun way what you probably went through uh, convincing people that this would be a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> I really want to talk to you about that initially because I love that you were like, I'm not a cook, I'm a cooker. And she's like, you know, that's what meth people do. And Charles Keralt and the whole thing. Who knows what, who Charles Keralt is anymore? Um, how was that whole thing? What was the genesis of this project in your head, but then also convincing people that it would be a good thing to do? See, so yeah, he, you re he really picked up on the low hanging fruit. <laughs> uh. <laughs> I mean, we're still, let's just say we're still trying to convince people to do it. So, uh, okay. you know, um, yeah. but, uh, but the genesis of the idea, I guess you want to, you want to take that? Well, no, it's, it's, it is, you're absolutely right. So we, um, it's been a long time coming. Mm -hmm. So there were a few factors that would come into this. So one was I generally like to host and, and have dinner parties or party parties and um, I started experimenting a lot more in the kitchen and people were very encouraging of like, you know, this should be a salon. You should have people over and, and do this and whatever. You should have a show. Um, Cause I guess everybody says that if you're an actor, you should have a show. Um, you sure, it's wonderful. also just you. It's just, you're so charming and it, it's so well written and it's so natural, you know? It's not something like staged or anything. It's in your home. It's beautiful. Thank Sorry, you. I'm interrupting. Thank you. Oh. No, oh. thank you. That's most kind. Um, and then the other part that happened was I was finishing my dis uh, PhD. And in the course of my dissertation, I would interview artists. And of course, I would bring them over and cook for them and interview them. And so then that hmm. became, that was the Charles Keralt part. That became like, we were like, oh, we should do a living journal of all these amazing artists in New York and, hmm. and, 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 Put something on PBS because, of course, PBS wants to do that. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, so then, so you have a PhD part, in part, part that's a little debatable uh, okay. where it shifted. Well, right? so yeah, so we, I mean, we got really excited about doing this, like you know, uh, we would call it reality as opposed to narrative, which is like pre-written, pre-scripted, you know, that kind of thing. Oh. So, okay. Yeah. So like a, a cooking show is a kind of reality thing because it's you know, it's, there's no like story that's happening. So we, we got excited about doing this written living story. journal. There's no written story. We got, we got excited about doing this uh, living journal of artists and cooking for them and interviewing for them. And then, 
And the more we thought about it and the more we lined it up with Constance's career as an artist, uh, we decided we, we wanted to do a fictional show about making a show. Oh, interesting. Oh, cool. Yeah. So, but I, okay. feel like we, I feel like we do need to clarify a little bit. So what you just showed your audience is, a, is an example of the narrative comedy that we've written. Right. Um, when you say that we film a lot of it inside our home, uh, that is more really referring to this, to the, to the, to the, to the cooking segments that we started to make during COVID-19 oh, okay. as a way of building up the brand. So okay. what folks can see right now, and we can talk more about it, but what they can see right now is really the cooking part of it. Um, but what you just showed them a clip of is the is the comedy narrative stuff that exists. Oh, uh, interesting. Okay, cool. Oh, that's so exciting. I didn't realize that there was like... Yeah, there's so many moving parts to it all. <laughs> Fabulous. And like you said, it's still sort of a work in progress about like how the thing is coming together. And, and we're at the ground level here. I'm way off the record talking about this. I can't. <laughs> My tens of listeners are going to be so excited. Um, kidding. We, we feel the same way. You know, I mean, this is, in many ways, this is what this character of Constance is going through. It's a woman who's trying to make a cooking show, and mm -hmm. there are episodes about not having followers, and how do you get followers, and all that thing. And meanwhile, in real life, right now, we are making an actual cooking show, and we're doing the same thing. How do we get followers? Where do we get followers? So we're having this weird life imitates. Our if you find out, let me know. I, all I know, all I do know is that, in, in, in all seriousness, Um, you know, when you have a podcast, it you get, you know, we're on Apple and Google and Spotify and blah, blah, blah. And at some point, and I don't even know how this happens, because you have to host the episodes on a certain platform. And those are just the audio ones. And now we have the YouTube channel, which is this is going to be, and then right. the audio will be extracted and blah, blah, blah. And at some point, Apple has these metrics that used to be really clear, you used to know how many subscribers you had and blah, 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 and, and breaks it down into segments and countries and all this stuff. Wow. And then randomly, I get these emails every now and then that like, I got an email a couple months ago that we ranked 105 in Ecuador for social and, and cultural podcasts. I'm like, well, holy Ecuador? shit. Like, I have no idea how Ecuador even found it. So You're I, in Ecuador. <laughs> Hello, Ecuador. Hello, Ecuador. Thank you, Ecuador. I mean, I don't know how it works, but I'm grateful for <laughs> <That's> <laughs> awesome. it. Yeah, um, I mean, there are show features New York. So if anybody in Ecuador is interested in learning about New York chefs or New York artists, watch our show and you'll get a good sense of it. And I'm going to put a link uh, on your for your Instagram page. Or you can just, like anyone, people know Instagram, you can head over to Constance Cooks. Right. on Instagram. That's where they can see the episodes and, you know, check on the progress and stuff of the show. So Constance and Mark and I met, we're still debating this exactly what year this was, but it was a long, it's been like a good 15 years ago, I think. When, when we were um, in high school, you know, 15 years. Yeah, exactly. Oh. <laughs> um, at our friend, uh, friends Marie and Dan's uh, New Year's Eve parties, like basically at the beginning, right? And then it would like branch off into other sort of non-holidays or whatever, but it was like basically New Year's Eve sleepovers and there was like 10 of us and we'd have gobs of champagne and great food by Constance and Mark and me and my boyfriend at the time and everybody, Maria, and everybody would make food and we would just like hang out, play Jenga. Oh it my was God. fantastic. It was amazing. Yes, was. I know it was like if you describe this evening to anyone, they'd be like, <laughs> "You guys are the most boring human beings in the world." Dirty. But it was so much fun. Exactly. It was so much fun. Exactly, and it, and it went on for a good decade. <laughs> it did, you know? yeah. absolutely. So we all, all stop for a decade. decade. <laughs> and I know, it was like, and I, and I it's the lost like, decade. I feel like dinner was, we usually ordered dinner that night, but the big making everything was brunch the next day. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's true. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. And we would make pancakes. You would make your ricotta pancakes. And oh, would, yeah. Yeah, would and, and, yeah, and Maria lasagna. would make the late night lasagna. Holy shit. That's right. That's so right. Good. Oh, my God. That's so good. Shout out to Maria Lamonto. Yes. I'm going to so good. Uh, blast it out after we do this. So I want to talk about the genesis of this project, of 
constant scripts. And we talked about it a little bit earlier. Um, how did you actually take this idea and, and turn it into something tangible that you could work, you know, show people and, and get people interested? Take one because um, it's, it's the week. Can I ask that already? No, yeah. no. Yeah. Uh, you know, I realize we're fragmenting the story. I mean, so so we had this idea for a show about making a show. We we you know right. We had this right. this fictionalized version of our life basically, um, and. Uh, um, uh, I tend to be the procrastinator. I mean, we we sort of we thought this was a great idea. We loved this idea, and then you know, life intervenes, work intervenes, uh, juggling. You know, you're an artist. You have a day job. You have a survival job. All that stuff intervenes, and I I didn't help. You know, like I wasn't really helping advance. He's the cost. totally throwing himself well, under anyway. the bus. It's not all him, okay. please. So, oh, no, so come on now. I, I like to joke that like. So, so now Constance is like, we got to do this. We got to do this. And I can see she's like in, in terrible pain that we've been procrastinating for a long time. So finally, uh, what I had read somewhere about a guy who basically paid himself to make his art. Uh, he took a week off. So that's what we did. We, we took a week off from our other obligations and we paid ourselves to take that week and really focus on the show. And we wound up, we basically locked ourselves in our apartment and, and wrote three episodes of the narrative comedy version of Constance Cooks. Oh, nice. And then from there, we assembled a team of collaborators because we're theater people and we're writers, but we're, we had never you know, worked in, in television or, or film or anything. Yeah, like I was going to ask you, how did you, how did you come across like, the DP and the director? And, and, and... It, began, it began with our director. It, 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 yeah. it began with Rosalie, and um, and then we also found a producer. And and between the two of them and a few other people that we knew, we were able to assemble a team. And um, and they those guys were great because they they knew that um, while we understood the concept of our show and where we the direction we wanted it to go in, they were so mm -hmm. great at like helping guide us into like how you know how does this get set up and how do we get this shot and, and right, right. we talked about the the feel of it and all those things with them. So they were they were really wonderful at at working with us and guiding us through that process. And I think Mark and I will say that it was we we feel like we got our NYU film education <laughs> in a year. And we paid for it, but you know, yeah, probably, <laughs> probably as much as an NYU totally, film. Absolutely, it's, it's, yeah, oh, no. it wasn't cheap. Um, it's it was so good. It's so it might have been it might have been cheaper than uh, NYU because we're still paying for that one yeah. on me. Um, but uh, oh, right, <laughs> right. Um, so yeah, we and so and and I'm we feel fortunate in that way as well that we um, I think we're we're fast learners and so we hmm. we we adapted pretty quickly to how this all rolls and then. We learned a lot during post, like post production, yeah. taught us oh even God. more than we ever thought all, we would be taught. All of those cliches, like you, you don't know what the show is till you get to post. You don't, you don't have yeah. a show until you get to post. Uh, you realize, you know, what you missed, what you should have gotten, what you should have written, what you didn't write. All that stuff, absolutely one hundred percent true. <laughs> so, does does the director handle, like, is he in the editing booth, or is it, or they just do like production, then you take over? So traditionally, when you're talking about a series, the director definitely gets the first cut so that you get okay. to see the director's takes and the things that they like. But mm -hmm. uh, given that we were the creators of the show and that we still needed to flesh out certain things, Mark and I were the were in the room with our editor for the rest of oh, the good. time. Oh, good. I thought so. Oh, so good. <laughs> I can't wait for people to see this because I do, I do love, I mean, of course I love the cooking uh, sequence, but the narrative thing is like it, it has such a great feel about it it's so warm and natural and it doesn't seem scripted even though i know there's a script um it's just a real ease about it and it's very new york and the lighting is great and just the whole tone of it is really really cool you know for yeah. just 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 to clarify, because as I say, we're going to probably say this 10 times over the course of this. Because uh, you've, you've sent people to the Instagram, which is, like, which is where they can see the cooking stuff. If they want to see the, the, the pilot, I think I can say this right. Yeah. The pilot is online. So the pilot is at ConstanceCooks.com. So oh, that, okay. that, that is the comedy narrative pilot. Um, oh, good. Okay. And with any, you know, 
if we do continue with this, you know, we, we will very likely rewrite that, we will reshoot it, <laughs> but it's, uh, it's, it's a really good statement of, you know, of what we want to do with the show. Awesome. Oh, I can't wait for you to see that. Um, so what's it like working uh, on something you love, clearly you love doing this, living in a, in a one bedroom apartment, right? Yeah. Married, How's, how does it affect your relationship? Good and bad. I'm gonna let you take the full relationship. <laughs> well, so, Scott. <laughs> so, so the one thing I have to say is that Mark and I, and and this might be really my fault, are we're not good at just doing something simple, uh, or something throwaway. Uh, we, <laughs> every time we collaborate, it's something that we really, really care about. So, um, I'm just yes. that far okay. up here. Okay. And then, <laughs> okay. Good to we, know. You know, like we don't, we, we don't just, we don't do well, like, ah, we're just going to put you, a little, uh, right. We, we don't tend to do like the little throwaway project. We imagine something that has a million moving parts, none of which we've ever done before, uh, that requires a lot of money, right? Like they, okay. the first thing you're supposed to shoot is supposed to be in one location, you know, with look, you know, you don't have to pay people small cast, things like that. Yeah two minutes long. No, our first thing was like three episodes. Each one is 12 minutes long in 20 <laughs> locations, you know? So, yeah, uh, we always to, yeah, exactly. We, 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 services. Oh yeah. We had to do all that. Yeah, we had to do yeah. all of that. Are you joking, really? It was a sad contract. Yeah. Oh my God. Absolutely. Wow. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. We, we basically, we, I mean, obviously we had a line producer and we had a unit production manager mm -hmm. and all these things, but we also, as the producers, were collaborating on where was the food going to come from for craft services. So oh, were the writers, were the actors, and we're collaborating on craft services. So it was, it was pretty, it was pretty intense. That's so cool. Um, how has that affected our? Marriage? Uh, how's it affected our marriage? All right. So uh, you know, we've talked about this before because because we've collaborated on theater before. Like I've directed mm -hmm. her in shows before and stuff, and we it's. I think we think that we don't know how people don't do it if they're married to each other. Because uh, it's something yeah. that we think about 24 seven, where we brainstorm 24 seven, we're so, we're so consumed by it that I, I don't know how it works when you can't just turn to the person next to you that you're right. living with. Oh, what are we going to do here? You know? So. Yeah. Or what do you think about this? Or. I think that's so, fabulous. We actually yeah. love it. I mean, it's not that we don't yeah. have disagreements. Oh, we but, have disagreements. <laughs> of course. Uh, but. but it's, it's um, we're on the same team. So it's, right. it, it, it actually, it's really wonderful. It's like the, nobody's going to care about it more or have my back more than Mark. Exactly, exactly. And uh, vice versa. And all we want is the best for each other. And I am super grateful that we're in the same industry because I think it would be very sad not to share this with my partner. Yeah, I agree. And I love, it. like you, like you said, Mark, like I can't imagine doing this without the person I'm next, like sitting next to and, and yeah. sharing my life with. It's beautiful. It, it would, it would require a lot more planning. I mean, <laughs> yeah. we'd have to, we'd have to be okay at Wednesday at four, we're going to have a production meeting here. It's like dinner time. And we're like, Oh, what about this? When now, right, right. Can I say something to that? <laughs> yeah. So, so <laughs> look, we did a production uh, a few years ago and Mark was very afraid that our life was going to be so consumed with that, that he was not going to have any space to himself. And he was going to like, you know, I was always just going to be talking to him about the show. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we, we decided during that show that we were going to have boundaries and that in rehearsal, we would do this. And then after rehearsal, we would have a certain period of time during the day for production because uh, we were producing it as well. And then after that, nothing. And we very quickly realized that we needed more time than that. <laughs> we needed more time to process. We need... And so it, it, you know, those boundaries just like melted you know, away, mel totally melted, <laughs> and it was, and it's fine. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, was there ever a point when it actually was nothing? Like you know, production, blah blah. blah I, think and the thing nothing is, but it, I, I actually would, would, would reshape this and say the the joy of being able to work with your partner is that you can capture the inspiration in the moment that it happens. Right. And so it's yeah, it's, yeah, added. Yeah. it's not. Yeah. It's not a, a negative. It's it's a it's something that you can. That's a great way of saying it. Yeah, because that's the thing is we're you know we're inspired all the time or something hits yeah. us all the time and then you'd have to write it down or you'd have to call somebody or you'd have to. But here it's happening in real time and we really can bounce nice. ideas off each other and shape it and stuff. How do you write stuff down? Because I have to write everything down. I I'm I'm just doing a podcast. Like, do you use like you know 
a paper towel. There are notes all over this phone. Me too, me too. Mark's phone is full of notes, and I'm so scared that we're never, we're going to nope. lose them. And we haven't organized them well enough because you gotta use Google Docs. Well, well, we also have Google Docs, but I probably have ten unindexed Google Docs worth of notes, and so yeah. then I'm constantly searching. Like, what oh, are they yeah. but I think this is really weird. I'm having some weird moment where I think the notes program in my phone also connects to Google Docs because I'll search for things in Google, and it'll have been up from my phone, and I'm like, I think they're synced up in some way. Oh, so, okay. Yeah, um, yeah, they're everybody's <laughs> watching. They're all watching us. So um, I know, seriously. So yeah, but I we agree with you, Scott. Like there have been times that we have not written something down, right. and a week later, we're like, oh, fuck, that was that? so brilliant. We we, we, <laughs> did, we thought we would never forget it, and then like two days later, you honestly, totally forget honestly. It. And I think I do think that um, um, I know notes does. I'm not sure if Google Docs does. Google Docs does, but. I often use the the dictation thing. Oh yeah. Like if I have an idea and I, I can't my can't my hands can't type fast enough for my brain. Yes. Oh yeah. yeah. Um I use it for texting and stuff like that. It's fantastic. I was I was walking down the street. I had a whole a whole idea for a new show. It, it, was, it was genius idea. I was like, this is brilliant. And I dictated it to myself. Uh-huh. Uh, from my phone because I was walking somewhere and I was like, okay, now I'm talking, talking, talking. And I, and I looked back at it and uh, not too many typos, but also a few, even that a few days later, I was like, what was that? What was that? <laughs> this is like, was this fever dream I just had? Oh, no, really? <laughs> yeah, I mean. Was it a good idea though? When you, when you like, I, think, I think there's something there. Yes, <laughs> I do. I just think, I think inspiration is such a funny beast. You know, oh, how man. do you capture that and develop it and, and, and tease it out? We're going to take a quick break and be right back. Connie, stop wasting your time. I know that it takes time. I'm going to say this for your own good. I don't want to hear from you again until you've turned your dissertation into a book. What about our $200,000 in student loans that we have? Uh, you have. If you die, I don't have to pay those back. You should get a PhD in bartending. <laughs> Okay, thanks. I even filmed him, stalked him, filmed him. Could you give this package to his agent to give to him? The show is called Constance Cooks. So I guess you could call me more of a cooker. You know a cooker is someone who makes meth, right? Um, order it, order okay. it! This can't be happening to me. I have a PhD in feminist visual art. So exactly, exactly. That's why we have low Perfect way to put it. as our as our material. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's why we just write about our lives because then <laughs> then inspiration. <laughs> it's right there. Yeah. Man. So where do your where do your story ideas come from? Like the narrative part. <laughs> low-hanging fruit um uh yeah it's 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 almost everything is based in some moment of reality i mean we we stretch it but it's yeah you stretch, almost, you've made it a little more dramatic but almost everything ha has a kernel of it happened to one of us in some way shape or form so that the stalking of isaiah how did that i, I have stalked people before <laughs> Was that, was, so did you know him before this? And it was just sort of- Oh, oh so well, thank, thank God. So Isaiah right. Whitlock Jr. is an amazing human being who actually uh, is a neighbor. And so we got, oh, nice. we got to know him um, and he was super kind and- Oh, the cat. there goes our cat. Oh. <laughs> cat butt, cat butt. Um, oh. This is Boo Radley. Oh my anything. God, are you kidding me? Oh my God, are you gonna <laughs> come? Scout. <laughs> Is your other cousin named We Scott? misnamed him though because he talks a lot. And oh. who, was very, who was very quiet. So I, I quiet. Yes. Um so uh, Isaiah was super kind and read um our scripts and agreed that um we were actually we pretty good. We weren't crazy something. people, yeah. Right. Yeah. And oh, um, so he very kindly agreed to participate and um and that's how that happened. Now I I never stalked him. Uh, but uh, okay. I, I, I mean, I have sort of. 
Am I giving away something that you're not able to show? I'm oh, sorry. Uh, it's, not me? it's okay. There's, I think there's a teaser or something that will okay, happen okay. with that. So don't, but yes, you're right. That, that episode is the episode. Okay. They, they, they don't even see it. We can just talk about it. How about right, that? Correct. So there, yes. So there's an episode in which my character uh, thinks that it's a brilliant, the only way that she's going to be able to get some recognition for her show is if she has somebody famous on it. Yeah. And so she has decided that the way that she's going to do that Again. is to get Isaiah Whitlock to be on her show. And she's stalking him around New York, trying to get him to notice her and be on her show. Fabulous. Um, and then, and I, then ensues. I love the, those videos that you sent me. Um, the receptionist at the, at the agent's <laughs> office. My boo just bit me. Oh, no. Tito does that too. I don't know what that's about. I mean, it's not like a, you know, no, I think like a vicious that we're not talking to him and he's pissed. Okay. I think Sorry, Scott, I feel like we interrupted you. No, no, that's fine. Um, I did just want to mention quickly the the receptionist at uh, Isaiah's agent's office. Bentley. Who is that actor? And I fucking love him. So that that He's is fantastic. that is a that is a real version of reality. Oh. <laughs> so a real version of reality. Right. So that so that real. lovely human being is Bentley Rand, and Bentley is the Great receptionist. Point for my former agency. And, uh, oh. and we, I don't know if I can say the agency's name, but- no, uh, we won't say the agency's name. Probably not. Um, yeah. He agreed to, he, he allowed us to film there on a weekend and he agreed. And I was like, Bentley, we really want to write you into the show. Would you please play yourself? And so he did. Okay. And I think I can say this. He, he, I don't think he really understood the extent of <laughs> right. what he, we were doing. He didn't think we were going to come in with all this equipment. <laughs> all oh, this. I think he right, thought, right. you know, Mark was just going to be handing, a hand, holding a camera and blah, blah, blah. he didn't realize that there was this whole team and a whole crew and this whole thing. And uh -huh. so I think when we came in, I think we just totally flipped him out. <laughs> and, um, and so he, he, um, you know, there was, he, I think he was, he was very nervous, but I think he did such he a did, great He's job. not an actor. He's not yeah, an actor, but this, he did so really, great. Wow. Just right. He's amazing. He's just I mean, amazing. I mean, I loved everything about the video, but like, you know, obviously you, uh, but he but, really yeah. stuck out to me. And then in the credits, you've got like all these like bubbles of his face, you know? Oh, he's so cute. Because he was hilarious. Because he's he's so when, funny. When he just let himself be himself. So funny. He's the funniest human being in the world. And we yeah. love him so much, which yeah. is why we wanted him in the show. Awesome. Yeah. Um, let me just do the. There's no, there's no way to cast that. That's, that, you know, I, I, I think don't you're know right. else who could be Bentley. I think you're right. Um, Mark, I want to talk to you briefly about all these adorable little post-production flares that you do on these videos. How'd you come up with that idea and what kind of, without getting all wonky about it, like what kind of software, what kinds of things, you know, do you, because I, I know a little bit about video editing, but I don't, I don't know how to like add like all these cute little elements. Yeah. So, well, I, I've, I've, had to teach myself so again because i this was not anything that i was really uh tuned into or, or plugged into like i had never trained for any of this stuff uh -huh. um I, like like everything with the show it's sort of there are a lot of pieces so the the uh the addition of graphics into the narrative was not something that we had originally talked about so we got into post-production and we got inspired to continue to tell the story with a lot of these post-production added animation elements. Nice. And for that, for the narrative, so if you go to ConstanceCooks.com and you go to the pilot, you'll see all these professional animations, professional graphics. That is a wonderful guy who we found, a friend of our editors, uh, Jason Whitaker. Whitaker, thank you. <laughs> and nice. I mean, really, he's amazing, he's amazing right? Fantastic professional editor, uh, animator. So then what happens is, is when COVID strikes and we wanna make all these cooking segments, um, we decided we wanted to keep the animation going, oh, but good. we don't have but we don't have access to Jason because you know we can't. It's hard to send files back and forth, and we also it's expensive, right? So like we're trying to right. do fast videos. So okay, so I had to teach myself some basic tools for adding this post production stuff. So uh, okay. so it's very rudimentary. I mean, if you can believe it, I'm using iMovie. And, oh really? Uh, okay. Oh yeah, and uh, iMovie 
does not really allow for a lot of, uh, it, you know, you can't use After Effects. And I, I mean, you basically have to do everything separate and then import it into iMovie. Right. So um, I don't have After Effects. So I'm using, this is really where I'm embarrassed to say this, I'm using PowerPoint for a lot of it. Oh, interesting. Um, yeah, PowerPoint has some decent basic animation tools um, wow. of a certain style, right? If, you, if you're willing to go with the South Park aesthetic. Um, <laughs> right. uh, PowerPoint's really amazing. And then also I'm using, um, I'm not using Photoshop, but I'm using um, a thing called GIMP, which is a, a Linux-based open, open share version of uh, Photoshop. So that's, oh, that, wow. yeah, and probably some of your uh, listeners out there are, are familiar with it. So between those okay. two, um, I can, I, I'm doing all that stuff. But I, I want to give a shout out here to Connie because <laughs> I think, well, I think, I think some people think that like it's all, all me and um, the workflow is, is not like, I don't necessarily, I come up with some of the animation stuff, but um, the workflow is typically goes something like this. Connie will say, uh, wow, wouldn't it be great if we could do this insert impossible animation here? And, <laughs> uh, and then I'll say, uh, no, no, that's totally impossible. I don't have the skill to do that. I can't possibly do that in the time we have. Uh, and I'll just totally stonewall it. And then like 10 minutes later, I'll be like, hmm, well, maybe I could do that. Interesting. <laughs> um, I like to call Mark the instant expert. Yeah, like, yeah, man, he, I know. He's one of those people who can like process information very quickly, bring it in, assess it, be very critical about it, figure it out, and he's like, he's on it. That uh, is not a skill uh, I own, uh, <laughs> but that is the skill he owns. But. Awesome. Uh, but definitely the, a lot of the inspiration is, is us sitting there watching, watching a rough cut going, oh, we could use something here, we could do something there, you know. Nice. So. I mean, that's, that's how I've learned, you know, aside from schooling and stuff, uh, what I'm doing now uh, is I have this idea and I Google it. And it's amazing how open the, the community is in terms of, you and know, what web production and video now. production. Sorry? And what a tool that we have now that we can just go oh, on the interwebs and ask a question and there's something there. It's amazing, isn't it? I mean, yeah. I, I love technology when it works. Just I can't interpret it. You two can. But <laughs> I know it's there. <laughs> it's just, it's all my misspent youth, <laughs> you know, just poking around and trying new stuff and whatever. Uh, me too. <laughs> Hi, I want to talk to you about your North Carolina and Lebanon roots. Right. How and how it... Uh, you know, shaped your life and how it shapes the series. Yeah. Well, so that's so good. I just, I'm pausing right now because all of a sudden I just realized we're getting ready to be talking about this more this week with this new class. But um, uh, so I grew up in North somewhere. Carolina um, and I, uh, my, but I'm second generation Lebanese. All four of my grandparents immigrated from Lebanon in the early 1900s. Mm. Um, and they all ended up in North Carolina. That's a long story in and of itself. But there was a fairly decent Lebanese population in eastern North Carolina. Okay. And um, my parents met, and, and it was um, not everybody in their families married someone who was of Lebanese descent, but they happened to. Mm -hmm. So I got to be full bred. Um, <laughs> she's not a muggle. What she's trying to say is she's oh, not a muggle. Right, right. That's what she's trying to say. Um, I'm, a, I'm a muggle. <laughs> so, um, so growing up in North Carolina uh, in our lifetime during um, when I was a kid, like nobody, nobody really understood what that was in the South. Um, mm -hmm. So I was, I, I definitely felt the outsider status on some level. Yeah. Um, and, and it, and it, it's interestingly, it culminated a lot in the food that I would eat. Like if I, if I took a sandwich to school, it would be in the Syrian pocket bread. Like falafel. It would be, um, yeah, or it could be in there with some pine nuts and whatever. And, and people just thought I was weird as shit. And yeah. I was weird as shit, but that might not have been the reason. But, um. <laughs> <laughs> you're, well, you're still weird as shit. I mean, come on. Um, and I'm also you know the you're weird as shit. Right. <laughs> I'm also the youngest of nine kids. So. Um, I think Ooh. our family was just an anomaly in and of itself. Like mm. that, that was just odd. Um, so, uh, are, they, are they still in North Carolina here? Yeah, no, they're all in North Carolina. Right. Yeah. So when I graduated from college, I moved up to New York and, um, and kaboom. So wow. here I am. Kaboom. Uh, but it was the first time, honestly, I, I do remember my first year up here and I would walk around and I'm like, oh my God, 
people are brunette. Like, <laughs> not everybody was blonde. It was all this is so exciting. <laughs> so one of those clips that you sent me, there's a, there's a, first of all, I want to ask you, do you actually have a, a landline? With a I do. Voice machine? I do. How awesome is that? I, I, I love that. No, look, I'm not, I'm not. I'm not doxing you. I just think it's fantastic. It's and then there's a message from your dad, and he has a southern accent. Because he's very southern. Wow. And we, so we and said getting that. and getting that recording from him was oh, right. was uh, a trick in and of itself. Oh my god, I love it. I love it. Wait, yeah. so I don't think, but so that's really her dad. Like, that's really my dad. Like we got him to record that's that message. And wondering. Yeah. Well, we we actually thought about not doing that. And then, and then we decided we would try it. We would try to get, oh, we would try perfect. to get this band. Yeah. And, and then the, and, the uh, box with a glow on it. <laughs> <laughs> so awesome. Yeah. So, that's so yeah. So, so we split, I would, I do want to clarify so that everything you're talking about just right now in terms of the answering machine and her dad and all that stuff, again, that's not the pilot. So you wouldn't see that if you go to ConstanceCooks.com. Okay. Uh, so just, just I know I'm, not, I'm giving it all away, but. Oh, no, no, it's okay. it's, it's building, all good. You know, like interest, hopefully. Got it. Really exactly. Okay. That's Absolutely. right. Someone's going to have to buy the show in order to see those episodes. Correct. <laughs> or at least take a meeting. Yeah. Right, tell me about, I think I know what, I, I think I know what the answer is, but tell me about the name of your production company, Beep Beep Entertainment. And how so, that came about. Yeah, I was, I was debating it. as to whether I do, do I want to tell the real story or the not real story. <laughs> Just tell, tell, tell it. Okay, so for, first of all, there is a sweatshirt. There is a sweatshirt that I own that says Beep Beep on it. I've had it since I was about seven years old. For some reason, I can still wear it. And um, <laughs> and it is like my all-time favorite sweatshirt ever. And it's, it's uh, you know, copyrighted, so we can't really talk about it. But, you know, it's, <laughs> there's... It's the two cartoon characters the two you cartoon might think. The two cartoon characters with uh, Beep Beep. Right, right. That's what I thought. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, right. So, that, so yeah, the, the T-shirt is the same reference. It is. Yeah. Okay, okay. But the real reason that it's named this is that because I was a dork um, and <laughs> growing up, um, I would do things like um, be a child exhibitionist and I would hang on the jungle gym in the first grade and um, show off my underwear. Because I, of course, I'm wearing a dress. Other, never. <laughs> and uh, I had underwear that said "beep beep" on it with the little bird going across oh it. Oh my god! And um, and later in my life, when I was in high school, um, these people came out of the woodwork that knew me when I was in the first grade and were like, "Oh my god, you were the kid that!" And I'm like, "Oh god, yes, yes, that was me." This is so much more layered and. The, it's, it's like the, you know owning owning the shame of my childhood is why we call <laughs> we call the production company BP. Scott, you heard it here first. I'll tell you what, this is an exclusive scoop. Uh huh. Here you go. Someday we're the first here on Way Off the Record podcast. I'm so excited. Um, I think I covered everything. Uh, I'm looking through my notes. I don't um, see how you can top that, really, truthfully. I mean, at that point, what, what I hope, more? I hope you're taking on my childhood shame, too. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm blushing. Can't you tell I'm blushing right here? Now, can I ask you, because I'm new at this whole Zoom thing. It is recording, thank God. Um, yes. But I don't know how long the recording has been. Like, how do I find out how long we've been? Oh, uh, I can tell you in one second. Uh, well, you should have a record in the upper in the upper left corner. It should tell you how long it is. It just says recording. Yeah, and there's yeah. a little you know blink uh, yeah. sort of slow fashion. Well, I, you know, I don't know. Sometimes when I hit record, it will tell me. But I'll tell you. I mean, it's only been about forty five minutes. Oh, perfect. Okay, just because I'm I'm the only reason I'm. God, I'm so sorry. Um, I'm doing that thing where I'm thinking about the podcast and I should be talking to my guests, but we're all friends here. Um, I want to try to make these things like 45, minute, 45 minutes-ish, you know, in length because uh, any any longer, I, up to an hour. I think hour is cool. Um, but I think any, anything over an hour, like Seth Rogen, I mean, or not Seth Rogen. What's the guy that the <laughs> famous podcast? And it, they're like two hours long and he does... He does them like five days a week. 
Seth wow. Rogen. Seth, mm. Seth Rogen. No, you know the, the... I know who that is. Oh, yeah. But is it Seth Rogen? He's not talking about Seth Rogen. Oh, is he doing a podcast? See, we're not really plugged into these not things. Not the actor Seth Rogen. I'm totally fucking with Seth. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Right. Yeah, right. uh, yeah, no. Um, well, you, know that, you know in the show, in the show where we talk about how she's a little bit not plugged in and a little bit out of step with the, <laughs> you know, that's all true. I mean, we really do watch a lot of old Law & Order episodes. Uh, oh, really right, don't, right. I was going to ask you about that. know much about Taylor Swift. Um, you know, it's all... Taylor who? I don't know. Ex exactly. I, I don't exactly. know. But I have to say, during during uh, the whole COVID thing, um, we have Hulu. We don't have... We haven't had a cable for like, you know, 15 years or something. So we have Hulu, Apple TV, you know, and then through Apple TV, like Hulu and HBO, I think is the only subscribed thing that we have. Um, I have to say Hulu has a really interesting selection of movies within it. Um, really random kind of indie, indie, indie things that I've never heard of that are really interesting and actually kind of cool. I'll make a list Love at some point because I've been spending a lot more time um, watching movies <laughs> in these yeah. past couple of months. Yeah. Anyway. We have, we've been... Uh, we've been very busy making uh, <laughs> making uh, these episodes, so we don't have Hulu, we don't have Netflix, we don't have HBO. Um, so yeah, at the end of a day of shooting, it's old Law and yeah. Order episode. I'll bet. <laughs> Thank you, Connie and Mark, Constance and Mark. Um, this has been really fun. I'm so excited for people to go visit ConstanceCooks.com, and then on their Instagram page, Constance Cooks to learn more about this fantastic series from my friends. Thank you for doing this. Thank, oh, thank you, you so much for having us. This is lovely. Yay. Yay. Way Off the Record has been written, edited, and produced by Scott Ambrosino, also produced by Christian Hernandez, and we are available on all platforms where you get your podcasts. And drop us a line on social media. We can be reached at the at sign W-O-T-R pod on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Thanks for listening.